So a couple years ago, my really good friend, Crystal George, she leads women's ministry over at my church. She's a Bible teacher and she was writing a talk for an upcoming series that she was doing with the women at our church. And since we're both teachers, we really like to talk about what we're working on, ask questions to the other one, see what they think. So I get a call from her and she's like, oh, I'm working on this talk and I feel a little stuck and here's where I'm at. And as she was going on to explain, she was talking about how everything starts with the heart and our heart or our feelings talk to our minds. And then we do. So as she continues to explain, I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm right on with you, except that's not how that works. It actually is your thoughts talk to your heart, which then leads out to the way you act. Just FYI, just so you know, that's how that actually works. And she's like, no, 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 no. That's not how that works. Start with your heart, goes to your brain, and then you act on it. We are both very strong personalities, so we just agreed to disagree. So my husband would say, well, Crystal started out right. It does start in your heart. But then you need to act. You need to do something out of this feeling or sense that you have in your heart. You've got to act on it. And then you think. And I'm thinking to myself, that sounds like a really bad plan. And then I have my really good friend, Charlene, who would be like, no, you act first. That is what we are called to do. We're called to go, make disciples, then think. And then if we have to feel, I guess we'll feel, but that's gonna be the last step in this process. So here's the question, who is right? Which order should these go in? I'm looking back over this footage. I am making broad speculations on things that do, are not concrete. On my own observations, collected by stuff I've read, I've thought about, I've observed in other people, it does not make it fact. But I do think it makes it interesting. Disclaimer over. Okay, spoiler alert, there is no correct order. Now, we will feel like there is absolutely a correct order. And as we move through today, you're going to see what I'm talking about. And I have a feeling that probably you're going to feel that same hunch inside your own self. Like, yes, there is an order and this is the correct order. The truth is there is an order for me and there is an order for you, but those don't have to be the same order. What really matters is that head, heart and hands are coexisting together because if we want to be a transforming and I do mean ING, actively transforming into the image of Christ, becoming more and more like him. That means we have to be embodying head, heart, and hands, what the word of God tells us a believer, a disciple, a learner is. But we will each embody it and it will look different, which means for most of us, we will lead in one area strong. For me, that's head. I definitely learn and lead and think first. And because I lead with my head, that means that there's also a weak point, which are my hands. My order is head, heart, hands. The hands are the last thing. The hands do not come as easily to me. I'm not very practical. I'm far more theoretical and up in my head. My weakness in my hands makes me more dependent on the body of Christ because I have people around me who are very strong in doing, very strong in feeling and heart. And we get to mutually benefit one another as long as we're aware of these three things need to be happening if we wanna be a transforming learner. I thought it would be fun for you to hear from other people about how they think about head, heart, and hands for themselves. All right, let's start with our head. That seems like the best place to start. I am most definitely a head person. Um, I have to think everything through. Everything has to be organized. Um, and logic like dictates everything. If I can think everything through, then the foundation is there because you always want to think before you act, right? 
Well, of course, Carissa, you always want to think before you act. That's what us head people think. I know for me, there's a judgment that can happen for those who don't think before they act or think before they feel. For us head types, exactly what Carissa said. To understand and to learn, I first have to wrap my head around it. I have to understand the concept. It has to seem logical to me. I lead with my head. I have to, I feel like I have to answer the questions I don't understand in order to get the full picture. And then once I can get the full picture, I feel like I will actually have my answer and then I can apply it to my heart and hopefully then my hands. Even when I asked her to do this, she, uh, Marco pulled me back and was like, I need some time to think about this. Can I have some time to think? Obviously you need time to think. People who start with their head are going to typically want time and space to thoroughly think something through. Just like Heidi's saying, that is step number one, understand it. And when I understand it, then I can know how I feel about it and what I should do with it. Because if I don't understand it, how can I feel or apply it correctly? That's how we think. We have one more friend who starts with their head and that is delightful Jordan. See what she has to say. So I tend to lead with starting with my head and then it goes back and forth between my head and my heart. And there's this tension of once I have it in my head, once I know scripture and know what scripture says, then it is the process of connecting it to my heart and believing and accepting it for myself. So that's what leading with my head and my heart feels like for me. It also looks like me trying to teach what I know in my head and what I know in my heart. And I love trying to help people know it and believe it in their hearts for themselves. So hands, I typically don't lead with my hands. When I do, it is literally by the work of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, me too, Jordan. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. It, it is coming out practically. I really jive with this idea of going from your head to your heart, back up to your head again. Like it just goes back and forth. And to me, I can think that thinking and figuring something out is actually doing. I know that sounds crazy, but if I understand a concept or I come up with some theory, and not only is it a theory, but it has a reflection of what I hope is the heart of God or the heart of truth, it feels like I'm done. Andy a lot of times will be like, yeah, but and what and why and so what? I'm like, what do you mean so what? We now understand it. We're all done. That's how it feels to me. So I really need the hands people around me to remind me it actually has to make its way all the way out into something fruitful. Now let's move on to heart. So for those of you who lead with your heart, you might jive with my really good friend, Ash. So for me to lead with my heart, it looks like um, reading scripture, seeing where it applies to either me, uh, the people at the table or the small group or wherever, whatever setting we're in, um, <clears throat> and connecting each other to the scripture and to each other, like relationally, if that makes sense. And I would say that's most important, like you said. Listen, this was a theme. Yeah, in my way, the start is actually the right way. Some people are even gonna throw a little scripture in there and and to be like, and this is why it should be the main way that we connect. That's most important because if our heart is engaged, then our head will be engaged then, and like more fervently maybe, and then our doing will be passionate and knowledgeable. That is so funny. So for her to connect relationally first is going to lead to better understanding and better doing. We've got to keep reminding ourselves there is no right answer, although it feels like there definitely is. Hi, my name's Annette. I am heart first. Really, I'm always, always, when I'm reading the Bible, I'm filtering through it and reading it out of, out of my heart, wondering, you know, what are the emotions that are being shown? Who are those emotions being shown to and why? And, and how does that make me feel? And where do I feel those emotions? Where do people that I like love or know have those same emotions and feelings? And I'm always trying to translate what I'm reading the heart of the, the hearts of the people in them. I'm always trying to translate it into what I know in my own life because times change, but people have struggled with the same things for centuries. So it's, it really helps me understand the Bible. It has never occurred to me that someone would have to relationally see something in the Bible or feel something in the Bible to actually understand it. That is a foreign concept to me. And what I think can happen, and this is why we're talking about this, at least in part, is what can happen is that someone who leads with their head hears something like that and says, 
no, 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 no. You can't start with your heart. You must start with your head. That's the right way to do it. And I think we do a disservice to one another because that isn't the right way for Annette to do it. She is taking the relationship first so that she can understand it and can apply it. Very interesting. Okay, let's take a listen to my friend Cindy and you're gonna notice that she's gonna start with what she's weakest in. And she says something really interesting. Overthink, first of all, if I try and go with my head, way overthink. I think this could be somewhat common problem that if we start in one section, because it would seem that we've been told that's the right way to do it, not only does it not work, it confuses us because that is not the way we learn. So for Cindy, she's saying, if I start in my head, I overthink and it's actually just confusing and I don't get anywhere. That is something really important to understand about yourself. I just focus on what it is that I feel the Holy Spirit leading me to do, say, or act on. And then I pray, ask other people for prayer and wait. You hear Cindy talking about waiting on the Holy Spirit, praying, having other people pray for her. She is leveraging this gift of starting here in her heart center. And then she's gonna go out and do and her last step is to think. This does not mean that Cindy should not be thinking because if this is working in motion, Cindy's going to feel it, do it. And then as she feels it and does it, her thinking will become much clearer. That is how she will understand the process. She will need to have around her people who think first to balance that out. In the same way that I need people around me who do first, to balance me out that I'm just not like a big floating head. Melissa, feeling is the most important thing. Oh, Amanda. <laughs> I feel like I'm learning something when I emotionally connect to a verse or whatever I'm reading. It's like the emotion has to be there. That's when I feel like I'm, that's what I feel like. That's what I, that's how I feel like I'm like learning something. So there we have that again, that emotional connection to the word of God. What Amanda wants to make sure is that she's got doers and thinkers around her to help balance that out. Now let's go to our doers. The people that tend to identify with doing first in my circle tend to be the more aggressive types because they're very much tactile and in their body and, and they're all about action and doing and going. I love the energy because I so lack it that these types of believers bring into a circle where we're learning it is totally different than what I bring, and I so value them. I really do. I think that I lead with my hands, and that's usually how I read scripture as well. If I'm reading something in scripture, and it sounds good to the point of like, oh, that makes sense. I just, when I take an inventory of my life, I don't do that. And then I do it, and then I understand it. That's really important for all of these, is that as Tabitha does it, she understands it more. It's like the whole, the hands part to me is, makes the belief in the head part, the heart and the head more true, makes it more evident to me. Last but not least, one of my favorite people in the whole entire world, Charlene. I lead with my hands. So when I approach God's word to study, I want to understand more of who he is, but I also ask the questions, what does that mean for me? What will I do with this? And how can I put this into action? To watch Charlene with the Bible open on her lap, I have never seen someone put into action more quickly than Charlene. It's like you can see her brain ticking. As soon as she's reading something, she is discovering what does it mean to now do it, to put it into practice for me, to have her in my circle is so important because she's such an example to me of what the doing looks like. She also tells me that I can make her brain hurt. Melissa, sometimes you just, you don't hurt my brain, but you stretch it so much. It's just like, wait, I need to go back and listen to that again, but it's a good thing. So I'm there to make her brain hurt and she's there to help me understand how to move into action with what I know and what I feel. Through these conversations, I sort of hinted at it. I've heard all kinds of scriptures being said of, of, of why we should think first. Do you know how many times throughout the New Testament you hear grow in your knowledge of Christ? 
grow in the knowledge of Christ. How much the apostles warned against false teaching. We have to know the gospel. We have to know our theology. These things deeply matter. And then for our heart people, it sounded something like the greatest command is to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself. This is why we're here. What else are we to do besides love God and love people? Then you have your doers, your hands saying things like, don't just be hearers or knowers of the word of God, be doers of the word of God. And I would argue with my friend Jan, who brought this up in Patreon, we've been like fiddling around with this particular verse, which has been a lot of fun. If you're interested in Patreon, the link is down below, but it's Luke 10, 27. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, this is whole body, with all of your strength and with all of your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. I've been thinking about this and I think when we holistically love God with our mind, our heart and our actions, the overflow of that type of embodying our learning is only love to be given out. That That is what will ooze out of us toward others, mind, heart, and doing when we are becoming transforming learners. I think it's deeply important that we keep all three in mind, knowing what is our strength and then what is our weakness. And then who do I have around me to help balance me out, to teach me the parts that I'm really weak in? Oh, I think we spend far too much time judging one another. I have seen people who feel, for example, last. It's the last thing they do. They will be more prone to judge those who feel first. They will say, oh, they're just being tossed about by every wind of teaching. Now that could be correct. That's why we have to keep all, all three in balance. But I think we need to respect that people learn differently and not just respect it, but leverage that. Not only do they do this differently than I do it, they see the world differently than I see it, but I wanna catch a piece of how they see and experience God because it's different. It shows me a different facet of who God is. If this conversation has been interesting to you and you want to discuss it with your two or three people that surround you, please share this with them. And then more importantly than that, have the conversation. What is your strength? What is your weakness? Discuss that with one another. How can you benefit one another? How can you help strengthen the other? What does that look like? What does it sound like? Is there judgment there? Let's just be honest about it. And then how do you leverage one another's strengths so that we are doing all three parts of learning and becoming transforming learners? Oh, that's what I want so badly. So share it with your people if you find it helpful. Have the conversations and I'd love to hear below. What is your strongest and what is your weakest? Oh, and if you missed the first video on head, heart, hands, and you want to hear a little bit about where this came from, you can click on this video right here and find out.